Hello everyone. It's, uh, it seems to me that this is the most important topic from this conference. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Here we are fully equipped for discussing how to earn, how to monetize uh, products, and how to uh, increase the number of pin users uh, uh, to your products. Uh, so, uh, you are welcome here with us, uh, Guru of uh, this <laughs> uh, uh, Alvaro uh, Julabat. Uh, Hello, Alvaro is uh, business development director of Pangal. Uh, so, and Ogul can uh, to fund uh, digital tribune. So, uh, sales director. Um, how can I um, offer you to hold this uh, panel discussion? So, uh, it will. Uh, we will start with the Q and A session. I will ask questions to our speakers, and uh, after that, after we will uh, discuss all the questions that I have prepared. Uh, there will be a Q&A session with the audience, so uh, if you want to ask something, feel free to ask and uh, we will ask our speakers and they will share with you some insight into the sphere. Uh, if you don't mind, we will start. Sure. <laughs> um, the first question is uh, about um, the K trends of the sphere. Yeah, uh, can K trends uh, in the casual gaming industry that impact monetization and user acquisition strategies? Uh, so, uh, Alvaro, uh, could you please uh, tell us about the K trends? What K trends uh, you define for uh, sustainable growth of uh, hyper casual games? So. Well, I think uh, a key topic right now, and actually there's been a talk about it, it's uh, hybrid casual, I think. Uh, not, not hyper casual, sorry, uh, casual okay. games, gross, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. the models, sorry. like, uh, yeah, adding more features to games that were meant to be just hyper casual and moving into casual, I definitely think it's something going on. Um, I do think that ads, it's something that more games that are purely in a purchase base are also trying, they're finding new ways to monetize. Also, you know, given the current economy situation of the world, they definitely need to try new things to grab every penny from the users. So I think um, ads of every shape and form are also a trend, a growing trend in, into cash flow. Um, and I think also in terms of uh, advertising, I feel like on the, from the UA side, more non-gaming is st stepping into the gaming, especially casual gaming, both UA and um, on the monetization side, the impact, which is kind of helping because it's uh, breaking this loop of UA gaming, UA into gaming and so on and so on. Uh, there's fresh money coming from other industries into gaming. I feel like more and more brands are starting to rely on gaming as a reliable source for UA. And it's kind of starting to make an impact also on the monetization, uh, on the ad space monetization of games. Um, do you want to? Yeah, yeah, I can add a few stuff. Um, you said like, what, what are the key trends you're seeing with uh, casual games? Uh, from what I see, I mean, when, when you say casual games, like actually, um, it's it's a huge, huge, huge vertical, and there are a lot of subgenres on, on under casual games. And I started to see like, okay, in the beginning, you, you, we're, and we're also seeing there are a lot of mash three games, mash three puzzle kind of games. Uh, but now, over the last few years, we have started to see an emerge of merge uh, type of uh, subcategory. And very recently, I started to see a lot of tile matching kind of uh, casual games. And also, we're seeing um, these games are have started to implement ads into their game because, like, typically a casual uh, game is you know, the difference from hyper casual is that they monetize mostly in a purchase, but they have started to adapt uh, like rewarded video kind of ad placements and even even uh, monetizing their 
user base through offer walls as well. Like they're, they're using the power of offer walls. They have started to implement offer walls into their games, and so th this is how uh, they're also um, becoming in, uh, and entering, stepping into the top grossing charts. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, uh, uh, it seems to me that um, we are going to um, delve into details about how um, can game developers uh, strike a balance between monetization and providing a great user experience and casual games. Uh, how to not overhaul players? Alvar, mm -hmm. can I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I think, I think it's ob very obvious about A-B testing and A-B testing. You need to really understand your users, how much they can take ads-wise. Uh, also, I feel like, um, especially in casual, as we mentioned, uh, it's meant to, or at least it used to be very in-app purchase based and a lot of people do not consider ads when, they, when it comes to the product itself. So I think it's always good to have a backup plan. What if you actually have to have ads and not integrate ads as a second stage, but more like considering it as a possibility from the very beginning, because that will help, you know, um, make it more user friendly it won't be that disruptive and then the engagement, the retention also will be impacted because the users will enjoy the experience with the ads uh, in the game um, and it will also obviously impact the overall revenue afterwards too. Uh, Gulkan, maybe you can add something? Yeah, you're definitely right. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm not a game developer, but as a like um, experienced person in the market and as a service provider and also a mobile game player <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis, I can say that you can implement ads into game in a, such a way that it becomes the it, it, it becomes maybe a, the part of the game design and makes you enter the game, come back to the game over and over again, and suddenly. Uh, who hates an advertisement person becomes a person who watches 50 rewarded ads uh, just to, you know, progress in the game. And at the same time, not to overwhelm people, but also not to cannibalize in-app purchases, maybe. Like, you have to implement the ads in a, such a way that, or, okay, the, the user is just watching 30 rewarded videos on a daily basis, but maybe, maybe you're missing that person's in-app purchase. If, if you do, but so you have to, you know, keep the balance in a very right way so that uh, you are kind of giving a taste of that premium content inside the game so that maybe the user is being um, incentivized to uh, do the actual purchase. No, no, I completely agree. I yeah. think that it's important also to set the timing for the ad doesn't have to be straight away showing the app to the users. You can just wait and give a time on the session to understand whether this user is going to go for the pay or just hold it until the ad comes. Yeah. Uh, I want to add that um, um, in, uh, um, nowadays it's important to create uh, and to create senses because we need to create the a right attitude to the uh, advertising. Yeah, that's why it's important to analyze what you're doing and to be careful you know, to not to overhaul uh, mm -hmm. users. So the next question uh, will be uh, will be about um, examples. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, could you share some examples of uh, an innovative uh, monetization methods? that have worked well uh, without uh, compromising uh, player satisfaction. Maybe you can, you can yeah. do something. Um, as I said, I'm not a developer. I, yeah. I don't come from a gaming studio, but uh, I can give you an example. There's there's a monetization method called... Sorry for interrupting, but sure. you will be uh, from the uh, customer side, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. Right. I mean, I, I tend to like... Um, play my clients games every day on a daily basis for example in a in a match tree example there's a method called piggy bank maybe, maybe you guys have heard before so you collect uh, it's basically like you collect a, a virtual currency by doing some tasks inside the game but at the same time on site those uh, like the same amount of that currency is being collected in a piggy bank and then when the, when you fill the for example the the whole uh, box um, the, the game gives you an option 
to purchase those coins inside, and but in a limited time frame. So it's like you work your ass off to get those coins, but at the same time, the, the, the game is um, offering that to you with enough purchases and gives you a sense of urgency with, with like time. It's like this is a limited offer for two days. So actually, I got kind of tricked into that and did that enough purchase in a game. Uh, so it works. It's, it's, it, it works actually. The piggy bank system. Note that down. Thank you. What about you, Alvar? Very good one. Um, my example is going to be more on a strategic slash business perspective. I'm going to be talking about one of my partners, Top Nation. They have designed. Well, they started with um, the. You probably got that guys have heard of it. Uh, the in-game ads, which is meant to be a placement that doesn't disrupt the total experience, where brands can just. They tried it and um, by one of these service providers and it did not pay off that much, but they did like the idea, so they did design their own in-house, in-game kind of native placements and that is giving them space to first test native from traditional networks, but also pitching directly to brands so they can actually bring in first-hand budgets which nice. it's a good backup and also balances out the traditional ad revenue from the networks, yeah. Um, thank you. Do you want to sound to add something? No, no. Uh, I uh, want to um, pay attention to the quality of game design because it's a really important part and uh, the question is how the uh, game design uh, impact on the user acquisition and uh, uh, impact uh, uh, how, uh, how can you value it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Maybe you... I, what I understand from game design is actually like, not like the design how the game looks, but what yeah. I understand particularly is that what is the core loop of yeah. the game? Like for example, I'll give an answer. Uh, like an example, uh, for example, Dream Games Royal Match, it's just you're, you're matching three <laughs> cubes into together and they plus and ta-da, you, you complete the task. But why did why is Royal Matches earning a lot of money? It's in the top uh, three grossing gaps and uh, like earning generating millions of dollars on a monthly basis because they are implementing really really good game design in it. For example, there's I'll just give you a very small example and the game is full of these kind of examples. There's a lava quest inside the game. So when you enter the lava quest, uh, you have to get your internet connected because we are competing with other players and you, ha you, uh, you have to complete every task without uh, doing any mistakes. So if you make a mistake, even if you're in the last stage of the lava quest, you get eliminated and you, you lose all your coins. So what, what it does is that um, from time to time during the day, it keeps you, uh, urges you to get back into the game and also not do mistakes because otherwise you will fall into the lava. Uh, so let's say that you fail and if you fail in a non-lava quest, uh, quest, you just quit the game and say, okay, I'll play it later. But if you're in a lava quest, it again motivates you to do an in-app purchase because you cannot fall into the lava. That, that gives that kind of... Effect. So that game design, that core loop, keeps you inside the game all the time. So that's my example. Maybe Albert, could you please uh, add something? Thank I, you. I completely, 100% agree yeah. with him. I think it's important to understand uh, yeah, the experience per session and to bring them back in. On top of that, I would say on a more um, broader scale, um, I think it's important to count on your design changes and adapt to seasonality, adapting, you know, from design uh, to the ASO uh, in terms of um, festivities like Christmas, uh, Halloween, Easter, things that might call the user attention and bring them back in, uh, create special in-game events for that, special offers, especially now with the e-commerce uh, season coming up where both uh, the user gets, uh, you know, the urge of spending has to be, uh, can be on Amazon, but also can be in your games, and also Amazon and advertising in these games, uh, ECPMs and the overall ad revenue come up, so it's important to keep the momentum and bring the users back to make sure that, you know, you grab as much as possible from it. 
Got it. Got it. So, um, uh, regarding the stretch disk, yeah, uh, how uh, can uh, game developers uh, effectively use free-to-play models and still generate sustainable revenue over time? Uncle Khan, could you please well, sure. tell me what I mean, there are a lot. There are a lot of free-to-play models there, but maybe I can maybe emphasize on using them and getting the most out of Overwatch. I think like in some part of the gaming industry or like in some part of the gaming world, because offers uh, offer walls are being either misunderstood or not like utilized uh, as the most. You know, offer wall is like is, is actually an app marketing. Uh, is, is is a marketplace that you get offers listed in there. It's a value exchange platform uh, that you can publishers can open an offer wall inside their game and offer some virtual uh, premium content inside their game uh, and basically publishers can use offer walls to monetize their non-paying users I mean because like not I mean how do you say like 95% of users in an average mobile game they don't pay at all so how do you get how do you monetize them you, you throw ads in front of them, some of them are, will be intrusive, some of them will just be churned, will, will just, you know, lo get your low retention, but offer walls could, I mean, if they're not paying for, for the premium content, maybe they can complete some tasks within other apps and, you know, um, still enjoy the game with the uh, uh, premium content inside the game, but at the same time, stay in the game without paying. and earning, generating some revenue for, for the publisher. And at the same time, on the advertiser side, why advertisers are putting their offers in, inside those there? Um, something that, okay, nice. okay the, the, the publisher's user base is just gonna complete my task and then leave my app. But if you're trusting your game, if, if you are um, uh, building a good setup inside your, inside your offer roll campaigns, you will get those users familiar with your game and all of a sudden, they're, next time they're coming back to your game, they come for good, not for completing a task. So maybe I want to emphasize on for those. Thank you, thank you. And um, could you please, uh, maybe you want to add something um, to this just, point? I just slightly think more. I think also it's important to, um, from the UA perspective, this time we're going to switch yeah. roles. Uh, it's important to set, you know, um, have revenue uh, optimization targets for, uh, towards your UA actually um, fact does that. We can do value-based optimization based on ad revenue. We can track, um, you know, set the target, our uh, ROAS goal on, from up to day seven. And if uh, you, um, you know, um, advertisers can track real-time ad revenue, we can optimize towards that. So it's a safe way to be more efficient towards targeting the users that are actually going to engage with offer walls or any other sort of ad that you have placed in your games, yeah. Thank you. And uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, yourself uh, have a question. Yeah? I just have a question to that. Do you only run with gamer, gamers or gaming companies or can it be also other apps as well? Any. <laughs> yeah. I'll come to you later. Okay. Uh, uh, it, uh, it seems to me that it's time to share uh, some cases regarding monetization, yeah, and uh, um, to share with maybe what tools uh, can um, game developers uh, use to monetize their products. Alvaro, could you please uh, tell us more about this, because yeah. you're a profi. So, um, I mean, obviously we know the ABC of the ad formats for mobile, I'm not going to go counting them all. Uh, two of them that I feel are making a slightly more impact these days from what I'm seeing under my experience are um, app open apps. Some of you might be like, oh, on your face, like in your face kind of app, but uh, they, can, they can be fully skippable. Uh, they have very short length and apps actually, apps like TikTok are making users very familiar with these um, type of apps because they, they use it a lot. So they're getting more used to it and it's not impacting that much the engagement and the retention. And also, I would say native, but done in the right way. Maybe including ads on the menu of the game or any other sort of, as I explained before, inside of the full user experience, um, that could work, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. Maybe you want to add something? Uh, yeah, maybe I can approach the question from the UA side uh, of things. Mm, like, yeah. uh, so, like, I will also like uh, talk about some attribution models. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have to measure our channels very effectively so that we can make good decisions where to, which supply source to invest and which supply source not to invest that much. So, for example, as Digital Turbine, uh, who is an, uh, who is offering on-device placements, preload solutions uh, to 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 app uh, marketers, um, we partnered with Apps Flyer to uh, to build a preload tracking solution because preloads are attributed in a in a different way than other like in-app inventory. So it's basically um, we have opened a small button inside uh, the the Apps Flyer. It's called like it says, it says preload attribution. If you open it, if, if you don't open it, it's just no, it's uh, attributed defaultly. But if you open it as the advertiser when you interact with Digital Turbine, it just gives preloads priority over clicks. So that when we preload uh, uh, an application inside inside a, uh, inside an Android device, uh, Digital Turbine gets the priority because I mean we think that. Getting the app in, inside there uh, is like kind of like is, is the first step in, 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 into the into the device, and with a longer look look back window. So, what does this preload attribution does? As I, as I said, it gives us priority over other sources, but at the same time, it really increases uh, the right and correct way of doing preload attribution. And what we have seen seen uh, over, the, over the, this year actually that among our gaming clients like all of them like the, the draw us goals we hit like 20 percent 25 percent increased before like non preload attribution solutions so I just wanted to you know give an example on that thank you so um, um, make it activities like um, user position and um, uh, looking for immunization, uh, advertisers uh, can face with the uh, negative feedback from users, yeah? And uh, the question is uh, to, um, that uh, advertisers should handle with this. And uh, maybe you can share with us some insight how to maintain the positive community uh, way to the product. Uh, maybe Alvaro, maybe you can Okay. Um, I mean, first of all, you need to understand whether it's an isolated case where a user, you know, oh, there's always this user that complains like, I don't want any apps in my game, but they don't want to pay anything. You need to, they need yeah. to understand that, you know, app developers have to make some money somehow. Uh, but if you see that it's a repetitive case, then it's important to pay attention, answer to the complaints, be apologetic, and then understand how to fix it. Um, as I said before, I think A-B testing is very important and checking whether there's another solution to, you know, tackle it, uh, another placement, another format, maybe it's the frequency, maybe it's the kind of ads and you need to fit, filter the right categories to be showing in your game. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be impacting the experience, um, but listening to the user is always important. Um, listening and to analyze the feedback of users, it's important to understand it to be uh, native in promotion yeah, and to be uh, successful in this field. So, um, maybe Abdul Khan, you want to uh, add something? Yeah, from a, from, from a service me. provider uh, chair, I can say that like over the years, I I worked with a lot of advertisers uh, and ran their UA campaigns. Um, on like in-app inventory pub publishers and what I've seen mostly is that maybe misleading ads like it's, it's for example there's there are type of misleading ads it shows kind of a game but when you enter the game it's not that there are some really good practices by the way like there are some masters of uh, misleading ads in the industry they're doing it in such a way that they they they're becoming like one of the top grossing apps out there but if if all everyone does that, uh, so it gives uh, it creates some speculations in, in the market. Other than that, maybe another super quick Offerwall example. So, you know, Offerwall is a value exchange platform, and when the user completes a task and expects, for example, 50 coins from from a game, and he doesn't get that, probably there's an integration problem there, and then that person comes and 
uh, right <laughs> under Google Play Store or App Store, like it gives one star to the game and said, hey, where's my premium currency, stuff like that. So maybe that's, uh, that should be something to manage. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Got it. Thank you. So uh, in a rapidly changing world, uh, it's important to be on the wave, yeah? And uh, how do you stay on the wave? How uh, do you get the information, the inside, the latest trends of the, uh, of the field? Uh, how do you stay connected? How do you stay on, how to stay, how do you uh, be, uh, how do you, uh, um, and where, uh, what sources do you uh, read and could you please share with the audience the insights? Well, first of all, I watch the recordings of uh, <laughs> these events, panels and solo speeches. I watch the recordings on YouTube, so thanks for uploading them. And other than that, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Constructor of Fun blog, both blog and also the YouTube channel. I think they're, they're like analyzing and like uh, looking at overseeing everything in the, going on in the gaming industry very well. So I would recommend definitely Deconstructor of Fun and also like following all the news on a daily basis from Pocket Gamer, right? Pocketgamer.biz. So yeah, maybe Alvar, do you want to add something? Uh, say the same, and also the guys from Two and a Half Games that were here before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and regarding the future, yeah, um, uh, how do you see the future of uh, monetization and you are in casual games um, and what maybe emerging technologies or trends uh, should developers be prepared for, Alvaro? What do you think about it? <laughs> Um, I feel like the decision making is going to become more granular uh, and more um, quick thanks to AI. I think like AI is going to start impacting every step of the, the game from the design to A-B testing, data analysis, uh, ad targeting, UA. I think everything is going to start get started or impacted towards uh, AI. That's probably going to be the short to mid term. And then, who knows, maybe new ad formats that might come up. <laughs> and I believe like um, one of the biggest opportunities for developers uh, and users will, I, I think, will be like the, the rise of the alternative app stores over the next few years because, I mean, it's getting harder and harder to, to get visibility, especially in Google Play Store. There are like more than 3.5 million apps inside there. Uh, so the alternative app stores, uh, I think it's one, is the future. And actually, as Digital Turbine, we're also we have also released our alternative app store earlier this year, and like, um, and we will we are continually deploying into net new devices through our carrier and telco partners. And other another pain point I also I've been hearing today uh, in in this event is that like people don't want to uh, be how do you say, relied on one single uh, store out there and also like pay 30% tax to, to the giants right now. So alternative app store can only bring you more visibility, more, how do you say, catered user experience and also uh, better economics for your game. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Um, we are trying to finalize and um, um, I think that it's really important to pay attention for uh, uh, for a strategy like uh, the uh, like a, um, a global ca uh, category, yeah, and uh, accept um, a performance marketing um, the part the main part, one of, of the parts of the strategy should be in influencer marketing too because. Um, it seems to me, from my side, yeah, that uh, it's important to pay attention to the influencers because uh, we are uh, talking much about the community, about the importance of the community, yeah, and uh, uh, influencer marketing help uh, helps uh, developers to reach out, reach uh, the community, and to get the uh, relevant, uh, relevant uh, users, uh, paying users, and so on. 
So uh, maybe you guys uh, want to uh, add something. Uh, we have three minutes left, and uh, uh, we should be in timing. And then we're gonna ask the audience. Maybe they want to uh, ask something. Uh, maybe super quick about like maybe influencer marketing. I, I'm I'm obviously not a specialist. I'm not an expert about that. But you know, uh, it really affects. Influencer marketing really affects consumer behavior. For example, I mean, yeah. when, when I'm going to buy an electronics device, I mean, first thing I do is enter YouTube and follow some influencers and see, see uh, watch their reviews on that. That is how I make a purchase decision and nothing more. You should believe. <laughs> you should believe. <laughs> so, uh, maybe I'll borrow. I just support both of your opinions, so no. uh, I cannot add much more than that. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe someone have questions to our speakers. Maybe we haven't time to discuss uh, uh, really important parts of this topic. Maybe Yusuf, you have one more question? No, no, don't have to match. We have half an hour, so you can no. We'll just talk with them after. Uh, you're going to talk with him after, yeah? We have it's, half a kind of a, it's a kind of a lead generation, you know? <laughs> he said we have, we have half an hour, so okay, let's... Stop. Half an hour more. <laughs> Do you guys have a minimum spend for your app? I mean, to run on your platform? I can connect you to my UA team to discuss that, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, any questions? Please, don't be shy. There are no questions. We, uh, we were uh, pretty much exhausting. No. <laughs> so, uh, we, are, uh, we finished. Yeah, maybe you yeah. want to go and uh, say, tell something interesting to our audience, because it seems to me that's a really important part of the panel discussion, uh, the ability to communicate with the audience. Yeah, I mean, uh, thanks for listening to us. I'll, I'll be around here for a few more hours. Uh, unfortunately, I'm skipping tomorrow, but I mean, if you're interested in alternative app stores and if you want to hear more about how to, uh, you know, utilize some on-device placements uh, for your game, I mean, uh, come to me and I'll tell you everything about it. Thank you so much.